What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is the fourth episode of the series and today guys we are going to have transfer deadline day in the series where hopefully we'll pull off one or two more signings but considering our budget right now 544 grand and 10 grand on a wage budget it's highly unlikely we'll sign anyone but you never know we could do. I'll show you my shortlist though and as you can see a couple of players on here that might end up coming to the club on deadline day. There's a few decent young Scottish players. John Ruddy's someone I'm looking at right now as a young goalkeeper who's contract coming at the end of the year. There's a couple of other players wouldn't mind signing too. John Sutar there as well who might be able to afford a couple of players of course outside our price range at the moment but one or two players could get signed. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But just before we get there though, we've got a transfer offer for one of our players. The day after the first advance is for Paul Patton. He's a foreign player. We also want to take him on a one-year loan. There you go. Get him out of the club. Another bit of four grand coming in. Another bit of four grand coming in. Another bit of four grand coming in. What does that mean? Why am I repeating it? I don't know, but he's gone. This is a weird start. And so here we are then, transfer deadline day, 10 hours on the clock, what can we do with now about 760 grand to work with? I'm sure we'll sign at least one player, who's going to be though? Let's find out. Now my main transfer target is John Ruddy of Berry. he's only valued at 350 grand, he's 19 years old. We don't have a full scout report on the guy, but I do believe he's 61 overall, so we'll be betting the two goalkeepers we have here already, and with his contract coming the end of the year, it would make sense. So my first bid will be for John Ruddy, I'll put one or two in on deadline day and see what we can do but again hopefully we can sign this guy I'm pretty sure we can get him for at least valuation uh, I'll put in an under valuation bid to begin with though we'll go with 200 grand and we'll wait and see what Barry say for that and I think he'd be a pretty good signing for us and of course, a lot of these players are currently out of our price range right now, which is kind of funny because obviously that's basically nothing, £2 million. But that's the best thing about Road to Glory is really. It's such a struggle in the first season trying to get good deals. But John Sutar is another player we could sign, 65 overall. And again, another teenager, 19 years old, a centre-back. He'd be a pretty smart signing as well. Uh, but I'm not sure we could pull off both Sutar and Ruddy. And if it only came down to we could get one and not the other one, I'm not sure who I'd prefer. So with Sutar, we'll put in a straight valuation bid, see what Harit say. And I guess we'll have to wait and see. But I think it's going to come down to one of Sutar or Ruddy on deadline day. Probably not both. We'll have to wait and see. But of course, don't forget, we still have two foreign players here as well in McCall and Manus as well. And both of these guys are on a transfer list right now. So if we sell them both, we can get around hmm, 300 to 400 grand for the pair of them, I'd say. So I'll definitely take that. And if we do sell these guys, we can probably pick up both of those guys on our shortlist right now. So first advance in deadline day. And I haven't received a single email. Oh, yes, I have. Brilliant. anti jinx Let's see what we've got. We've got both bids rejected. Oh. So that's not exactly the start we wanted. Uh, Barry saying Ruddy's worth more than what we put in, and Hart said they want 1.1 million pounds for Suta. Of course, we can't afford that, but we'll put a new bid in for John Ruddy anyway, and I think that we could probably pick him up for his valuation at 350 grand, but I still believe there's a chance we can get him for under his valuation, despite what Barry say. We've got time to work with on deadline day, so plenty of time left on the clock. So we'll, we'll bar cheapskate docks back at it again. 300 grand, wait and see what Barry say. And as for John Suta, again, we can't afford 1.1 one million pounds so I'm going to go up to just over his valuation which is 750 grand but of course it looks likely now we'll probably only be able to get one of these guys it looks like it might be John Ruddy which is fine I don't mind that but uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see still three new emails here so hopefully one of these is a transfer offer and it is it's for Alan Manders get in that's exactly what we needed a bid for our goalkeeper because he's valued at 400 grand it was which only put a 275 grand bid but I'm not going to rock the boat and counter offer I was going to accept that lower than valuation bid here because we don't need him we can't use him and that'll take our remaining transfer bid to one million pounds but I just saw rejects again for Ruddy and Suta which is not good and now Barry wants 525 grand for Ruddy. Oh, come on, lads. I'll give you his valuation. I will give you his valuation. He's valued at 350 grand. He's out of contract up at the end of the year. Let me take him for 350 grand. Come on. And as for Hearts, they want 1.1 million pounds for Suta, which of course we can't really afford. With the sale of Manus, we could, but I kind of want Ruddy instead of Suta, a better goalkeeper. Um, I will go to 850 grand for Suta and wait and see what Hearts say. And as we advance once again, and three more emails here so probably we'll see Manus get sold in this email and we do which is fantastic and excellent stuff Hart and Berry have both accepted our bids for Sutar and also Ruddy as well and I think because of the money we raised from Manus we can now bring them both in which is fantastic
fantastic. So let's offer them both contracts here. We'll give Ruddy what he wants, 1,150 quid a week on a five-year deal. And same with Sutar as well, 1,350 quid a week on a five-year deal. Hopefully these players accept those contracts and due to the sale of manners, we should be able to sign them both on deadline day. And after our next advance, we see those two emails and that should be that. Excellent stuff. Sutar and Ruddy both accept their contracts. So I think, theoretically, we should be able to bring them both in. That's going to be a big, big stretch. Can we afford them both? Hmm. Well, I've just adjusted the transfer budget and it seems like we can bring them both in. So Sutar will come in first. These low wages are really helping right now. Only 1.3 and 1.1 grand a week. That means you can sign them both. So both targets come on deadline day. Absolutely fantastic. And we sell a foreign player too. Ruddy and Sutar sign on deadline day. Bring in little cheap deals there and we'll take those both. And so these are the new boys then. John Ruddy, 61 overall, 19 years old. Pretty smart signing for valuation. And I think Sutar's valuation might have just gone up as well after the signing too. 65 overall, 19 years old. And he looks pretty decent too. Quite quick as well for a centre-back. Only 19. Looks quite a smart signing that one. I'm happy with both of those deals. So that is going to be the end of deadline day. Then it ends here. We've got one hour left. And as you can see, we've kept hold of one foreign player, unfortunately. I tried to sell him, but no bids came in for him. The call, for God's sake, why does not I want the guy. I mean, 52 overall, answering my own question there. Uh, not the best, but uh, still. Other than that, we sold everyone else and we spent £2.2 .2 million on three new players, Tierney and then Ruddy and Sultar coming in on deadline day. We don't have the kind of money these big clubs have yet, but I'm still happy with the business we've done in our first season. So that is that. Deadline day ends and I'm okay with it. I'm looking forward to how we can do in the first season with these three new players and this new looks in Johnston team. But I mean, that's not what I wanted to see, is it? Rob Hamilton, the 16-year-old, Bruce Bruising his rib and being out for nine days. Come on, Rob, what's going on? And for new viewers of the channel as well, I do a squad report at the start of every single month so you can see how the players are currently getting on and how their attributes are looking after the months go by. Uh, it does go by quite quickly, so if you want to pause the video at any time to take a look at one of the players, feel free to do so. But yeah, it's been an okay start for us, I think. Tierney coming in, Ruddy coming in, and Sutar coming in as well. Got Hamilton, the youngster at the academy already too. It's not been a terrible start for St. Johnston, but of course the main thing right now is how we're getting on in the league. It's been a brilliant start. You take a look at the table too. We are top of the table with 13 points. Four wins and one draw from our first five games. Only three goals conceded as well. We're making a statement early on with St. Johnston. We're statistically the weakest side in the division. But right now we flip that and we're the top of the table. So it's been a brilliant, brilliant start. Long may it continue. And I would have said at the start of the season, playoffs would have been my target. But automatic promotion, considering our start, I would definitely say it is doable. And for the first game of today's episode, we take on Preston. They are in fifth place right now. We are now in second place as Villa have played one game more and they got a point in that game. So we can return to the top of the table with a draw and a win. We'll put us two points clear at the top of the table. So let's continue this fantastic start and get our fifth win in six games. Let's get another big three points here. Man, I cannot get the ball off Preston right now. Their passing is so, so good. They're playing like Barcelona. Well, like Prestalona. Seriously, I can't get a ball of them at all. God's sake, man. Seriously, they are so good at keeping hold of the ball. And it's just so frustrating. Seriously. He's McLean on the ball through towards Swanson. Down this right-hand side. Takes around one. And still Swanson on the ball. Keeps on running. Has a man on the overlap. It's Easton. He'll whip it into the center looking for Kane. Ah... Uh... Johnson tackled by Anderson. Now we're in a captain's armband since I've dropped Mackay and a chance on the break here. Come on, Kane on the ball. Kane on this ball through towards McLean. I can't break him down. Jermaine Beckford through the gap towards the number nine here. Gets himself inside and goes for goal. Well caught by Ruddy. Jermaine Beckford on the ball through the gap to his teammate back towards Beckford. He goes through and there's going to be no debut clean sheet for the new boys. Jermaine Beckford with the goal and it's 1-0 to Preston. There's been literally nothing going on in this game at all but a quick little 1-2 there between a the strike partnership and Jermaine Beckford finesses the ball into the corner. 1-0 to the host. Not a great start to this second half. Change of the team dynamic, put the new signings in, and we have our first loss. Not a great start. Johnson on the ball, gets himself inside and finds the back of the net. It's 2-0 to Preston just before the hour mark. And yeah, we're on course for our first loss. In a game of few chances, Preston have taken two. Johnson gets the ball, we stand off him, he goes for goal from just outside the area. It's a great strike in fairness. No chance for Ruddy in goal. Daniel Johnson makes it too. I, I just cannot create anything in this game. I'm all over the place. McLean and Kane have had great starts, but really I can't blame them at the moment because they're just not getting a service. But here is Kane on the ball, turning and finding Craig. Craig now on the ball, tries to get inside and does. Craig, 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 Craig. Good save, Lindegaard and McLean will turn it in. And directly from kickoff, we're back in the game. We half the deficit. 
I don't know whether that'll go down as an own goal or another one for McLean. It was a good shot by Craig. Lindegaard parried it, but McLean turns in the rebound via the deflection, and McLean has got another goal, six already in the championship for our number nine. He and Kane are tearing things up, and we're back in the game. Come on! Well, we've won ourselves a corner. Come on, come on, come on. Stop his time. Can we get an equalising goal? Ruddy is forward for it. Our final chance. It'll be whipped into the middle. It looks for Watson. It's up in the air. It's a scramble. Preston clear. And that will be that. And I think they're going to make it 3-1 with Stevie May of all people to surely wrap the points. Oh, God, no. We put it over. He didn't. Stevie May scores. Preston 3, St. Johnston 1. It's our first loss of the year. We brought everyone forward for the corner including John Ruddy and Stevie May a former St Johnston player actually former St Johnston striker makes it 3-1 and Preston are going to take all three points well I wanted a clean sheet on the debuts for our new centre back and goalkeeper I wanted the three points again instead our first loss of the series in the season in the league I should say at least that's not great. Probably my worst game of the series, this one, too. I played very, very poorly indeed, but Preston's defence was just fantastic. Could not break them down at all. And that's why man of the match goes to this guy, Bailey Wright, with an 8.2. And now we're going to come into the second game of today's episode as well. Second and final game today, too. Uh, transfer deadline day took a bit too much time. So we're getting to the second and final game today's episode. We're away at Molyneux to take on Wolves. And hopefully we won't have back-to-back -back defeats and we'll get back to winning ways and get back into the top two. I'm going to have to make quite a few changes for this game as well due to fitness reasons. Not good, not good, but uh, one of those things. And Kane with 33 stamina. Oh, it's gone up by one rating. Well done. My voice went really high there and I don't know why. Right, come on. We lost the first game. We can't lose the second game today's episode. Back to winning ways. Let's get the three points here, boys. Come on. Come on, lads. Let's do this. Let's get the win, yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Miller through the gap towards McLean. He offloads towards Hunter. Hunter on the ball. Back towards McLean. McLean, McLean. Oh, McLean, McLean. Oh, McLean. This guy is just unbelievable. Stevie McLean is just tearing things up right now. Chris Kane is not in the team. We're not in the first 11. But McLean is the star at the moment. What a finish. Clips the underside of the bar. He's got his seventh goal in the championship already. What a star. Some people have told me it's Stephen McLean. It's McLean. But I think it depends on what region you're from. I'm pretty sure that's one of the names where you can say McLean or McLean. But I prefer McLean. So we're sticking with McLean. And what he prefers is to find a back of the net. And that's what he's done again. Seven goals in the championship. Boys on fire. Oh, Mike Williamson lost out to Hunter and what a chance here. Hunter bearing down on goal. I'm looking for Stevie McLean. Oh, he just faked his man and then fell over. Come on, bruv. What was that about? Seriously, Watson towards Murray Davidson. Davidson with a touch. Takes around his man. Cross towards Hunter. Great save by Andy Lonergan and he catches the rebound. Yes, great tackle by Sutar. Now Alston through towards McLean and McLean to his strike partner. Hunter takes it in his stride. Alex Hunter. I mean, that is just terrible. Jim would not be proud, mate. Seriously, Jim would be saying he's no grand son of mine what the hell is that McLean towards Hunter great little first touch there and he's away and he's away and Hunter 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 what a run what a run what a run by Hunter Hunter great save by Lonergan and Danny Bath hoofs it into touch and now Watson to Murray Davidson whips it into the center and there's Hunter again off the bar by Hunter and the follow-up header is saved by Lonergan was just about to cross the line there and it goes behind for a corner. We're piling on the pressure early in the second half. But George Hunter just can't find a back of the net. See, I'm just realising now. It's not Alex Hunter in our team. It is, it's his half-brother. It's his adopted half-brother. No one knew about him. He's not in the story or anything. They cut it out of the journey. They didn't have time to show it. But uh, it's his half-brother. He's just not quite as good. Alex made it through the exit trials. He didn't. As that's header goes just wide of the post. Ruddy's kick looks for McLean and Stevie McLean heads it on towards Hunter. Well done, good first touch. And he's away. The adopted half brother Alex Hunter through the gap towards McLean. Now Thompson. Thompson tackled, but keeps on going. Thompson inside towards Hunter. Hunter, great save by Lonergan, but turns in the rebound. Hunter with the goal. Jim is proud. It's 2 0 to Johnston and the pointer in the bag. Great initial save by Andy Lonergan, smothering his body at the ball. But the rebound comes straight back to Hunter, who puts it into the open goal. George Hunter with his second of the season. Excellent stuff. And it's all over at Molyneux then. We're back to winning waves. Wolves nil, St. Johnston 2. We get the win. A really good performance too. And a great way to bounce back after that loss to Preston. Without question, a deserved win. 12 shots and 8 on target. Should have scored more, really. And man the match to George Hunter, the boy. The adopted half-brother of Alex Hunter. Those 20 Premier League clubs thinking, why didn't we sign him instead? He's way better.
And the only journey George Hunter is worried about is our rise up the table with St. Johnston. Because after that win, I think we will be going back into the top two. Let's have a quick look. Villa beat Brentford. So I think we're going to second place. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we are. We're one point behind Aston Villa. And that is how today's episode is going to end then. So we're back to winning ways. Excellent stuff. Five from our first seven. We may not be undefeated anymore, but it's still been a very good start to life in the championship with our Scottish team. So a big thank you for watching today's episode of club and country hope you guys have enjoyed it much love to each and every one of you really appreciate the support on the first three episodes it's been absolutely fantastic it means so much so thank you very much for watching this one i hope you have enjoyed it if you did enjoy today's episode please do consider leaving a like you don't have to if you don't want to that is totally fine but i really would appreciate it a big thanks for all the support so far on the series much love to you all if you enjoyed this episode please do leave a like and i'll see you for the next episode of club and country very soon